Hey guys, McCoy here. I'm going to give you a video. Got you over at Space Weather. Um, you guys see that wind speed? Okay, you guys can, you know, anybody that's been watching my channel for a while pretty much knows that that ain't very high. That's very, very normal. Okay. KP index, nothing out, out of the ordinary there. It's our geomagnetic storm levels, our activity. It's not even in the active range. <laughs> okay. It has to get up to five to be a minor storm. Not even close. Why am I even talking about this? Well, this is why. Okay. What you're seeing here is the ACE model. Um, the timestamps are down here on the bottom. You can see that they're in two hour increments. Okay. This was made on the, I think this is for the 21st. It started at 8 UTC on the 21st is the beginning of it. And it goes out 24 hours. Okay, now, I've talked to you guys a little bit before about this model. Okay, so when you see this model, the speed's in yellow, the density's in orange, and we're going to talk mainly about density right now. Okay, now I've talked, uh, I mentioned to you, you see how straight this line is? Doesn't even have to be straight, solid is really what I mean. Okay, but if you look over here, you see how it's all popcorned out. Okay, what you're looking at there, guys, are data. That's when it's showing you a data point. So when you see a solid line, that means it's staying pretty consistent around the same area. When you start seeing this stuff, it means it's picking readings up that high or low. Okay? So with that being said, we go up here and look at the density. The orange one. Guys, if it gets over... If it's over 100, that would be because you got 100 to 1,000 there. So you're, we're looking at probably like 150 for that particular data point. In other words, it's telling us that it had a density of 150 when it hit the detector, the satellite. That's what this model is telling us. <laughs> okay? Um, that's extremely high. Okay, now we're looking at centimeters to the third power there, okay? If you look over here, and that's just a unit of measurement that they use, okay? All the models use that same measurement. So when I'm showing you these other models, they're not different units. They're using the same uh, measurement unit anyway, okay? To show you, uh, plot a point here, okay? So keep that in mind what I just said. This is up to like 120, 130, maybe a little bit higher probably, Okay? And again, this thing usually hangs hangs out. You can tell just by looking at this, guys, that most of these points are below 10. Okay, if you even look at the rest of the day here. Now, something else I want you guys to notice. There's nothing up here until here again. It started doing this little popcorn thing again here recently. And I'm going to show you something on that here in a minute. Is that a true density reading? Is it correct? Is this model correct? Well, I don't know. Um, it uses solar wind basically to do that. And it can't tell where, where, where the, what the source is. It can't even really tell you that it's solar wind because in order for it to be solar wind, it has to come off the sun. It's assuming that the energy that it's getting is coming from the sun. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. It, that's assumption that this that model makes. That, that's just what it does. So when we see anomalies, we gotta you know start looking at like cosmic rays, the reaction from planet X object, magnetic field, all those all those things we talk about here, guys. Now this is an Australian model. Okay, I take I've taken you guys here a couple times, but this is one way we can see that if things are kind of on the up and up, right? What do I mean by that? Well, we got two different agencies here trying to give us the, the same kind of data, all right? Trying to show us the same thing visually. This is the one with the line, okay? What's good about this one, guys, is it gives us a capture every minute, okay? So if you look at the UTC time right here, every minute it will give us a capture. And this line will move accordingly. Now, I can tell you right now that we've seen it getting inside the satellite orbit line, okay? 
we were getting hit good enough that it was bouncing, at least according to all this stuff, it was bouncing in, in and out, right? And again, I just showed you that it was trying to say that the density was up over 100. This one, when you look at this one, here's the density. Okay, see it? Density. This model is showing that it never gets over 10. 10, 11, 12, something like that. But nowhere near 100 ever does it get that high. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push play here. We'll just do that. All right, you can watch it. Okay, even if it snuck a double digit in there to you, I don't think you're going to be able to say it got to 100 because it didn't. So basically what I'm saying is the density that it's showing here on this particular model is not matching up to the other. Now we can go back a day two, all right? We'll look, we'll, that's what we'll do. We'll look at the, well, let's do this. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So again, look at the density there. It's moving, bouncing around every minute there. Now when we do get hit, you'll see the density go up, okay? See that? I got to like 13, I think. Something like that. But in no way did it ever say 100 of anything. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is the, these models are conflicting with each other. And, you know, so what What do we do? You know, how, do, how can we tell? Well, we can't, guys, pretty much. We can go look at all the other data points, and nothing's really all out of whack. Okay? But yet we're seeing some big disruptions. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pause for a second. All right, guys, I got you back. Okay, here we go. All right, look up here at the solar wind speed. It really never gets up over 600, guys. I'll just tell you that straight right now. Um, you can watch it if you want. But what I really want you to do is watch what these waves coming in. Okay. Now, when I say we got waves coming in very close to each other, this is what I mean by that, okay? It's very faint, but you can see that. Okay, it's mimicking the shape of our bow shock. Okay, and it makes sense that it would do that because when it hits that pressure right there, hits that wall, our shield, all that energy should bend around that shape and then go on off into our magnetosphere right off towards the back that's typically what happens okay and that's what we're seeing there but these waves are extremely close together and i've talked about this before and this is kind of showing what i what i'm talking about that we get kind of left open for a second if you look up here because those waves are right right back to back you can see how the colors here, the intensity just stays, almost like it's following it right into us. And you can see a slight difference there. But really, man, that's just kind of showing you what I was trying to uh, explain before. That when we get these waves so close to each other, our magneto, our shield doesn't have a, enough time to recuperate and get back to its normal position. Okay? It'd be like getting smacked in the face by... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? By me, right? And then getting smacked in the face by like somebody like Jackie Chan that has extremely fast reflexes, right? <laughs> I mean, what you can't recover as fast from Jackie Chan's because he's smacking you so many times. You know what I'm talking about there? That's kind of what's going on with our magnetic shield there. So wave after, I mean, right next to it. I mean, just back to back. Okay. Now I showed you that law period, right, on the ace. How that popcorn kind of stopped? Well, here's that area. See how nothing's going on? Now watch this. As we get back, when it's, the popcorn started showing back up, watch. What happens? See that? Right towards the end? I mean, so, yeah. You know, is this actually what's going on? Um, you know, again, it only got up to 600, 620, the, the speed. So whatever disruptions were, if that's a true disruption... The density is causing it. But those two models are conflicting with each other. So that's why I'm having trouble with kind of understanding what's going on here. Now, again, 
This did not come from the sun. Whatever's going on here did not come from the sun. We could be getting some solar wind. Okay, it could be contributing to this. But a solar wind speed of 600 and this should not be causing this. Okay. Now, unless it was just an extreme dense wind speed, uh, charged particles, high, you know, extremely high density. That's what we're seeing. Now, that right there is very, very crazy. See that? Okay, I'm going to back it up. We got hit, right? And then we start doing a rapid expansion. But what I find interesting, see that bends around almost? And then when you see it do that, see how our bow shock out there almost went flat? That means we're really getting, like, bounced around, okay? <laughs> It's getting bounced really, really bad. It's it's rebounding back out. It's trying to push out, and it's pushed out so hard it caused it to, to misshape in that. So, but then this one here. This is the one that really kind of, uh, I've never seen this before on this model. Okay, I've seen spiral lines, compacted lines, those kinds of things to make it where it looks solid, but never of this size and this duration. So what am I talking about? I'll show you. Well, let's back it up. See that right there in the middle? A big black ball. That's our pole lines that spiraled in, you know, in a big ball. And then you see all this stuff. Okay? See how you got them separated in the weird shapes? And then we get hit again. And all this stuff starts happening. Now, again, these are some big looking i mean these, these are bad hits if this is actually what's going on so we get towards the end here and then you see this okay that that's the first sign there look now watch watch what happens i want to point this out something took an imf line and bent it like that whatever magnetic disruption that was that's yeah that's just kind of crazy guys I mean, I'm not, I don't know that I've ever seen an IMF line look like that. I've seen them crisscrossing and making all kinds of different shapes, but never like somebody just, you know, picked the middle of it and kind of pulled it back like a rubber band and got ready to let it go. Okay? That's about what it looks like. Now, as I keep going forward here, you're seeing all this stuff right in the middle here, really making some... That's a lot of pole line magnetism, guys. I have never, ever seen that that is extreme that's all I'm going to say that's extreme so we'll, we'll go on forward here with it okay now watch what happens here you see those IMF lines right there on the end I noticed this earlier balling up now watch what happens look at that look at all that is not this here, that blue there, is not I am. That is not the typical background color there. That's actually a bunch of the IMF lines wrapped up into themselves so tight that they made a huge ball like that. How do I know that? Because watch. Because then it turned into pole lines right there. Did the same thing. Okay, so that is just crazy stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but guys it, you know those two conf conflicting models you know which which one's right which one's wrong if i'm looking at them wrong somebody please tell me if i'm interpreting the data the wrong way um i don't like i said i don't know that you know i, I can't say which one's correct and which one's not all i can say is that if these hits are actually what's going on, it's actually being caused by high density, not solar wind speed. Okay? So, it is what it is. Is it cosmic rays? Is it... Because I, I don't think the majority of it came from the sun. I do think it came from a different source, whatever it is. Um, I'm sorry I ain't got more answers for you guys on that one. But um, I just wanted to show you guys that because it, it really, that's something that I've not seen. So... Anyway, guys, um, if this is true, uh, be on the lookout for some, probably some upticks on the earthquakes. Um, we got another coronal hole getting ready to come earth-facing. 
okay and it'll take it three to four days to get here probably so you can look this is going to be an ongoing thing here for the next probably few weeks we're going to have some true solar wind actual real solar wind from a coronal hole but when we're getting that what happens when we throw in the mix you know the extra energy from like a cosmic cosmic rays or the reaction from the planet x object when all that stuff hits us at once what's going to happen um you know do they combine energy do they do this do they do that i don't know but we're going to wait and we're going to watch and i'm showing you the observations you guys please go check out those models um you know make your own mind up on all that and you know at least i, I hope i was able to explain what we're actually looking at here and and to show you that there are discrepancies between models and agencies sometimes okay um so which model's correct hard to say i can say that both all the models were showing disruptions i can say that so but anyway guys god bless yeshua saves and uh you can drink this kool-aid oh oh man this is really living <laughs>